New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas based on the famous theatrical books begun by the late Burns Mantle, now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. Mr. Chapman. Our play this evening, Blythe Spirit, is by Noel Coward, and it should be called a ghost play because there are one or two ghosts in it. However, most ghost plays are serious, and this one isn't. Take Hamlet, for instance, or Macbeth. Very serious. The ghosts in such works are always upsetting people. Of course, in book fiction, there were Thorne Smith's Topper and his playmates, who were funny and friendly. In play fiction, we have Noel Coward's enchanting spook, whom he calls Blythe Spirit. This lady is not going to drive anybody in the play you are about to hear to suicide or murder, or is she? At any rate... She's going to stir things up a bit, because Noel Coward is the gayest light comedy writer of our time, and there can't be any light comedy unless things do get stirred up. We ought to have a good performance of Blythe Spirit now, for our actors know their business, and they know the play. They include John Loder, who will have most of the ghost trouble, Mildred Natwick, and the role she created on Broadway, and the funniest role this excellent actress ever had, Hala Stoddard, the prettiest ghost I ever saw who played Blythe Spirit for a long time on Broadway, and Ann Burr, who was on this program recently as the nurse in The Hasty Heart. Now, it's time for Noel Coward and our actors to take over. Time, the present. The scene is England. The living room and a house in Kent. Charles Condamine and his wife, Ruth, are awaiting the arrival of a strange and unusual guest. No sign of her yet? Not yet. Well, I think I'll start mixing the drinks. I'm sure Madame Arcati will want something sweeter than a martini. Anyway, there's no ice. No ice? Edith is bringing it. Edith? The new maid. Oh, yes. Uh, tell me, doesn't she strike you as being a little peculiar? In what way, Charles? Well, the way she zooms about the house as if pursued by the Furies. Oh, that. I expect it's her training. She was in the Navy, you know. As she is not in the Navy now, you might tell her it's unnecessary for her to do everything on the double. I've told her. So don't complain if everything is a little slow motion tonight. Oh, I shall welcome it. And another thing you might tell her... Oh, later, dear, later. Here she is now. Here's the ice, Mum. Where shall I put it? On the table, Edith. That's right. Uh, Edith, I left my cigarette case on my dressing table. Will you get it for me? Not, sir. On the double. (laughs) Slow motion, did you say? You took it by surprise. I hope the Bradmans get here before Madame Arcadi does. It's essential that we all pretend to believe in her hocus-pocus. Yes, if she suspected you were only collecting material for a mystery story, her prices might go up. I don't think she's that sort. Now, here's your drink. Let's drink to your new novel. To the unseen. Mmm. It's most awfully strong, darling. Yeah, I meant it to be. It's not every day we entertain a medium. And whoever she may bring with her from the spirit world, or whatever they call it. Charles, Mm -hmm. was Elvira a help to you? When you were thinking out a new book, I mean? Every now and then, uh, when she concentrated, but she didn't concentrate too often. I do wish I'd known her. I wonder if you'd have liked her. Oh, I'm sure I should. Yes, I'm sure I should, because, you know, I've never felt the least bit jealous of her. And that's unusual for the second wife not to feel jealous of the first. Poor Elvira, she died so young. Does it still hurt? When you think of her? No, not really. Sometimes I almost wish it did. I, I feel rather guilty. But you haven't forgotten her. Oh, no, I haven't forgotten Elvira. I remember her very distinctly indeed. I remember how fascinating she was and how maddening. I remember how badly she played all games and how cross she got when she didn't win. I remember her 
a gay charm when she achieved her own way and an extreme acidity when she didn't. I remember her her physical attractiveness, which was tremendous, and mm-hmm. her spiritual integrity, which was nil. You can't remember something that was nil. Well, I, I remember, remember how, how morally untidy she was. Was she more physically attractive than I am? And that was a very tiresome question, dear, and fully deserves the wrong answer. You really are very sweet. Yeah, I love you, my love. Poor Elvira. If I died, I wonder if you'd say in that offhand manner, poor Ruth. Oh, you won't die. You're not the dying sort. Neither was Elvira. Oh, yes, she was. Now that I look back on it, she had a certain ethereal, out-of-this-world quality. Now, nobody could call you even remotely ethereal. Oh, nonsense. She was of the earth earthy. Well, she is now, anyway. Charles. Now, get this straight, my darling. I was devoted to Elvira. We were married for five years. She died. I missed her very much. That was seven years ago. I have now, with your help, my love, risen above the whole thing. Admirable. But if tragedy should darken our lives, I still say with prophetic foreboding, poor Ruth. Ah, that's probably the Bradmans. Might be Madame Arcati. Oh, no, she'll come on her bicycle. She always goes everywhere on her bicycle. Ross, here, sir. It's the front door, isn't it? It is. Yes, ma'am? Not so fast, remember? Sorry, ma'am. Ah, good evening. Good evening, Dr. Redmond. Evening, ma'am. Go right in. Thank you. Oh, we're not late, are we? My husband was detained at the hospital. Occupational hazard of the medical profession. Yes, quite all right, Doctor. M- Madame Arcati isn't here yet. Oh, that must have been her we passed coming down the hill, pedaling furiously on a bicycle. <laughs> then she won't be long. I'm so glad you were able to come. We've been looking forward to it. Uh, I'm quite excited. She certainly is a very strange woman. I'd never have guessed that she'd been a professional medium in London for years. You, do you believe in it, Mrs. Condamine? I'm afraid not, but I do think it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, what exactly are you hoping to get from her, Charles? Mm, jargon, principally, uh, you know, a few tricks of the trade. I haven't been to a seance in years. I want to refresh my memory uh, for the new novel I'm writing. You think she tells fortunes? I love having my fortune told. I expect so. I was told once on the pier at South Sea that I was surrounded by lilies and a golden seven. Worried me for days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here she is. Are you going to meet her, darling? Well, I really feel quite nervous. <laughs> I... Madeline Arcati. Good evening. I'm afraid I'm rather late. But I... I had a sudden presentiment I was going to have a puncture. So I went back to fetch my bicycle pump. How nice of you to come all this way. My dear Madame Arcati. Then, of course, I didn't have a puncture at all. Mm, Perhaps you will on the way home. Uh, Oh, you know Dr. Bradman? Oh, the man with the gentle hands. I'm delighted to see you looking so well, Madame Arcati. This is my wife. Oh, we're old friends. (laughs) We meet coming out of shops. (sighs) It was wonderful cycling through the woods this evening. I was deafened with birdsong. It's been lovely all day. Mm, but the evening's the time, mark my words. The evening's the time. Don't you find it very tiring, bicycling everywhere? Oh, on the contrary, it stimulates me. Steady rhythm, that's what counts. Once you get the knack of it, you need never look back. On you get and away you go. But the hills, Madame Arcati, are pushing up those awful hills. Oh, just knack again. Down with your head, up with your heart. And you're over the top like a flash and skimming down the other side like a dragonfly. How are you coming with your new book, Mr. Condemine? Oh, quite well, thank you. Uh, I wish I could say the same. Oh, you write too, Madame Arcati. Mm, not novels, just memoirs and children's books. Uh, what is it this time? A uh, children's book. It's mostly about very small animals. The hero is a moth beetle. <laughs> <clears throat> I had to give up my memoir of Princess Pagliatini because she died last April... I talked to her about it the other day, and she implored me to go on with it, but I really hadn't a heart. You uh, talked to her about it the other day? Yes, through my control, of course. She sounded very irritable. It's funny to think of people in this spirit world being irritable. Oh, I don't know, Mrs. Bradman. We have no reliable guarantee that the afterlife will be any less exasperating than this one. Pardon, ma'am? Yes, Edith? Dinner, sir. Thank you, Edith. Shall we go in? Oh, no red meat, I hope. There's meat, Madame Arcadia. I don't know how red it is. Would you rather have an egg or something? No, thank you. It's just that I make it a rule never to eat red meat before a seance. Sometimes has an odd effect. What sort of effect? Well, 
there have been cases where... Um, no, but I'm sure nothing like that will happen tonight. Anyway, we'll risk it. <laughs> Delicious dinner, Mrs. Condemine. Delicious. I do hope the meat was not too red for you, Madame Arcati. It's quite worth the risk, I should say. Uh, uh, just what is this risk, Madame Arcati? Mm, I'd rather not frighten you needlessly. Only once did it very nearly happen to me. My control was quite scared. I could hear it in her voice, but after all, she's only a child. Do you always have a child as a control? Oh, yes. Some mediums prefer Indians, of course, but... Personally, I find children more satisfactory. Daphne has been with me for years. And she still goes on being a child? I mean, doesn't she show any signs of growing any older? Mm -hmm. Time values on the other side are utterly different from ours. When did you first discover that you had these extraordinary powers, Madame Arcati? When I was quite tiny. My mother was a medium before me, you know, so I had every opportunity of starting on the ground floor, as you might say. I had my first trance when I was four years old, and my first protoplasmic manifestation when I was five and a half. What an exciting day that was. I shall never forget it. Of course, the manifestation itself was quite small and of very short duration, but for a child of my tender years, it was most gratifying. Your mother must have been so pleased. She was. Well, Madame Arcati, shall we get started? Don't be so abrupt, Charles. We just finished dinner, Madame Marcotte. It may not be in the mood. No, since my dear, I'm always ready. Hi ho, hi ho! It's off to work we go. Oh, well. uh, which room would be best for the séance? The library is quite good. Well, let's see it. Let's through here. Amazing. What, Madame Marcotte? This room fairly bristling with psychic vibrations. Oh, is that bad? To the contrary. If you don't mind, I'll just open this window for a moment. Ah, you deep, deep breath of fresh air. Well, you may talk if you wish. It will not disturb me. Oh, oh. Charles, I feel so strange. An excellent dinner, darling. I congratulate you. Mm, the mousse wasn't quite right. It, it looked a bit uh, hysterical, but it tasted delicious. Cuckoo is very angry. I beg your pardon? I said that cuckoo is very angry. Listen. You hear it? Yes. Now, how can you tell it's angry? Oh, it's a tan. Well, I think the mist rising from the marshes. There's no need for me to light my bicycle lamp, is there? I mean, no one's likely to fall over it. No, we're not expecting anybody else. Good night, you foolish bird. Ah, now to work. If you will all be seated around this table. Mrs. Yes, sir. Hands flat, please. Any fingers should be touching. That's right. Mr. Tommy Tucker sings for his supper. What shall he have but brown bread and butter? I beg your pardon? I despise that because it doesn't rhyme at all, but Daphne loves it. Who is Daphne? Daphne is Madame McCarthy's control, George. She's a little girl. Weren't you listening at all? Oh, I say yes, yes, of course. Uh, how old is she, Madame McCarthy? Rising seven when she died. And uh, when was that? February the 6th, 1884. Oh, the poor little thing. She must be a bit long in the tooth by now, I should think. Oh, be quiet, George. You put Madame Arcati off. No, oh, what about the light, Madame Arcati? All in good time. First, the music. Music? I presume that is a gramophone. Uh, yes, would you like me to start it? Please stay where you are. I can manage. Ah, here's the records already out. Brahms, oh, there we go. Rachmaninoff, two florists. But Daphne really likes is Irving Berlin. Here's one. Always. Always? Charles, what is the matter? Nothing, nothing at all. Now then, there are one or two things that I should like to explain. Presently, when the music begins, I'm going to switch out the lights. I may then either walk about the room for a little or lie down flat. In due course, I shall draw up this dear little stool and join you at the table. I shall place myself between you and your wife, Mr. Condamine, and rest my hands lightly upon yours. Now, I must ask you not to move or speak or address me or do anything in the least distract me. Is that quite, quite clear? Perfectly. Of course, I cannot guarantee that anything will happen. Daphne had a cold, cold recently and was rather under the weather, poor child. <laughs> On the other hand, a great many things may happen. One of you might have an emanation, for instance. Emanation? 
Or we might contact a poltergeist, which would be extremely destructive and noisy. In what way destructive, Madame Arcati? They throw things, you know. Oh, no, I didn't know. But we must cross that bridge when we come to it, mustn't we? Oh, certainly, by all means. Fortunately, an elemental at this time of the year is most unlikely. What do elementals do? Oh, my dear, one can never tell... They're dreadfully unpredictable. Usually they take the form of a very cold wind. Oh, I don't think I shall like that. Occasionally reaching almost hurricane velocity. You don't think it would be a good idea to take the more breakable ornaments off the mantelpiece before we start? Don't worry, Mrs. Gondervine. I have my own methods of dealing with elementals. I'm so glad. Now then, empty your minds. Concentrate on a space or a nondescript color. Now the music. Right. Hey, no, what's that? that? Is there anyone there? One rap for yes, two raps for no. Now then, is there anyone there? Oh, shh. Is that you, Daphne? Is your cold better, dear? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you doing anything for it? I'm afraid she's rather fretful. Is there anyone there who wishes to speak to anyone here? Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, Daphne, dear, please don't do that. Stop it. Please stop. Daphne. Oh. Be good. There's a dear child. You say there is someone there who wishes to speak to someone here. Is it Mrs. Condamine? Stop it. Behave yourself. Is it Mr. Condamine? There's someone who wishes to speak to you, Mr. Condamine. Well, tell him to leave a message. Charles, I really must ask you not to be flippant, Mr. Condamine. Uh, I'm sorry. Do you, do you know anyone who has passed over recently? Well, not recently, except, oh, my cousin in the civil service, and he wouldn't be like Are to... you Mr. Condamine's cousin in the civil service? I'm afraid we've drawn a blank. Rack your brains, Mr. Condamine. It might be old Mrs. Plummet, Charles. She died on Whit Monday. I can't imagine why old Mrs. Plummet would want to talk to me. It's worth trying, anyhow. Are you old Mrs. Plummet? She was very deaf. Perhaps you better shout. Are you old Mrs. Plummet? No one there at all. Oh, how disappointing. Well, there's nothing for it but for me to go into a trance. Excuse me a moment while I start the... Music again. Not always. Now, please don't play always. I ever not, Charles. Don't be absurd. I'm afraid I must play the same record. It was the most imprudent to change horses in midstream, if you know what I mean. It's all right, but I do wish you would. Hi, Tata. Enjoy, Tata. What do you get to spell red butter? It's that Daphne she ought to have a ad noise of. George, please. <laughs> don't go oh, oh, oh. What was that? Madame Marcotti. She seems to have fallen on the floor. <laughs> In a trance, I've no doubt. But this is at the table. It, it's lifting up. It, it's trying to get away. Oh, press down hard. I said press down, George. Not knock the table over. I wasn't touching it. Ought we to pick it up or leave it where it is? Well, how the devil should I know? No need to snap at me. Leave it where it is. Who said that? Who said what? Somebody said, leave it where it is. Oh, nonsense, Charles. I heard it distinctly. Well, nobody else did, did they? I never heard a sound. Uh, it was you, Ruth. You're playing tricks. I'm not doing anything of the sort. I haven't uttered a word. Good evening, Charles. Oh, ventriloquism, that's what it is. Ventriloquism. What is the matter with you, Charles? You must have heard that. One of you must have heard that. Heard what? You mean to sit there solemnly and tell me that you... That none of you heard anything at all? Well, I certainly didn't. Neither did I. But you who are playing the tricks, Charles, you're acting to try and frighten us. I'm not. I swear I'm not. Difficult to think of what to say after seven years, Charles. Well, I suppose good evening is as good as anything else. Who are you? Elvira, of course. I'm so silly. Oh, I can't bear this for another minute. Get up, everybody. The entertainment's over. Oh, Charles, how tiresome of you. Just when we were beginning to enjoy ourselves. Oh, never again. That's all I can say. Never, never again, as long as I live. What on earth is the matter with you? Nothing. I'm just... I, I, I'm sick of the whole business. That's all. Did you really hear anything we didn't hear, Condamine? Oh, no, of course not. I was I was only pretending. Oh, dear. Madame Arcati doesn't look as if she were pretending. Dr. Bradman, perhaps you'd better have a look at her. Yeah. 
She's out, all right. Well, bring her around. Bring her around as soon as possible, Doctor. I think we'd better leave her alone. We can't just leave her sprawled out on the floor like that. Of course not. Now, wake up, Madam Arcati. Wake up. It's time to go home. Here, here, go easy. Uh, Get get some brandy. Give us some brandy. Uh, Here, help me lift her into the chair. Charles, you're acting like a madman. There, now. Wake up, Madam Arcati. Little Tommy Tucker, Madam Arcati. Here's the brandy. Good. Oh, Charles, you're spilling it all down her dress. (coughs) Oh, she's coming, too. (sighs) Are you all right, Madam Arcati? (sighs) Certainly I am. Never felt better in my life. Well, what happened? What is satisfactory? Well, nothing much happened after you entered your trance. Oh, something happened all right. I can feel it. No poltergeist at any rate. That's a good thing. Any apparition? Not a thing. No ectoplasm? I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think so. Very curious. I feel as if something tremendous had taken place. Well, Charles pretended he heard a voice in order to frighten Oh, it was only a joke. Very poor joke, if I may say so. Nevertheless, I'm prepared to swear there's someone else psychic in this room apart from myself. I don't see how they can be, really, Madame Arcati. I do hope I haven't gone and released something. <laughs> However, we're bound to find out within a day or two. You mean it'll, it'll come back? I mean, if something is released, as you seem to fear? If any manifestation should occur, or you hear any unexpected noises, you'd better let me know at once. This one may not be dangerous, but I very much fear it is dangerous. And deadly. Charles? Hmm? Oh, hello, Ruth. What's the matter with you? Matter? Yes, you seem odd somehow. Do you feel quite well? Oh, perfectly. Uh, I think I'll have a drink. Do you want one? No, thank you, dear. Oh, it seems rather chilly in this room. You come over by the fire. I don't think I'll make any notes on that seance tonight. I, I think I'll start fresh in the morning. Steady, Charles. You'll give yourself away. Good Lord. That was very clumsy, Charles, dear. Elvira. Then it's true. It was you. Of course it was. Charles? Charles, darling, who are you talking about? Are you... a ghost? I suppose I must be. It's all very confusing. Charles, why do you keep looking over there and mumbling? Look at me. What's happened? Ruth, don't you see? See what? Elvira. Elvira? Oh, yeah, I forgot. You you never met. Elvira, dear, uh, this is Ruth. Uh, uh, Ruth Elvira. Uh, Come and sit down, darling. Do you mean to say you can't see her? Now, listen, Charles. You just sit down quietly by the fire and I'll mix you another drink. But you must be able to see her. She's there. Look, look, right in front of you. Are you mad? What's happened to you? You honestly can't see her? Now, this joke has gone quite far enough, Charles. Sit down. Stop looking so idiotic. Well, what am I to do? What in the name of heaven am I to do? Well, I think you might at least be a little more pleased to see me. After all, you conjured me up. I didn't do any such thing. Nonsense. Here's your drink, darling. That awful child with the head cold came and told me you wanted to see me. Urgently. Oh, it was all a mistake, a horrible mistake. Now, stop talking like that, Charles. I told you, the joke has gone far enough. I've gone mad. That's what it is. I've just gone raving mad. Relax, Charles. Oh, how can I relax? I shall never be able to relax again as long as I live. Well, sit down anyway. You most certainly can't relax standing up. African natives can. They can stand on one leg for hours. I don't happen to be an African native. You don't happen to be what? An African native. What's that got to do with it? Oh, it doesn't matter, Ruth. Really, it it doesn't matter. Would you like some more brandy? Yes, I think I would. I'll fix it for you. Very unwise, Charles. You always had a weak head for brandy. Oh, I could drink you under the table. There's no need to be aggressive, Charles. I'm doing my best to help you. I'm sorry. Here, now, drink this, darling. Then we'll go to bed. Get rid of her, Charles. Then you and I can talk. Now, that's a thoroughly immoral suggestion. What is there immoral in that? Now, I wasn't talking to you. Who are you talking to, then? Elvira, of course. Oh, blast Elvira. There, now she's getting frozen. Uh, I don't blame what her. What don't you blame her for? Oh, not her. You... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, ha, I know what it is. You're working out something for your book. How one of your characters would react if her husband suddenly lost his reason and you're using me as a guinea pig. That's it, isn't it? Ruth, 
Elvira is in this room. She's standing a few yards away from you at this very moment. Yes, dear, I see her, under the piano with the zebra. Oh, but Ruth, I'm not going to stand here arguing any longer. Who's red? Shut up. How dare you speak to me like that? I wasn't speaking to you. I was, I was speaking to Elvira. I will not listen to any more of this nonsense. I'm going up to bed now. But I shan't be asleep. I'm too upset. You can come in and say goodnight to me if you feel like it. That's big of her, I must say. That's all I have to say. Good night, Charles. Oh, Ruth! Let her go, Charles. Let her go. <laughs> well, I did a good job there, didn't I? Oh, now, Elvira, how could you? Poor Ruth. I'm obviously having hallucinations. All I know is that you sent for me. And here I am. But I didn't sin for you. It's all a mistake, I tell you. Oh, Charles. Ah, uh, what is it? I want to cry, but I don't think I'm able to. Oh, why do you want to cry? With seeing you again, you've been so irascible like you always used to be. Mm, poor Elvira. Uh, is it cold being a ghost? No, I don't think so. Uh, what happens uh, if I touch you? I doubt if you can. Do you want to? Oh, Elvira. What is it, then? Oh, I really do feel strange seeing you again. I loved you very much. Yeah, I loved you too. Oh, Elvira, I... no, I can't touch you. Well, perhaps it's just as well if I'm going to stay for any length of time. Oh, I suppose I shall wake up eventually, but I feel strangely peaceful now. That's right. Put your head back. Hmm, what are you doing? Stroking your hair, darling. Can you feel anything? Only a very little breeze. Oh, it's better than nothing. Oh, I suppose I'm really out of my mind. They'll put me in a, an asylum. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't lie. Oh, poor Ruth. Forget about Ruth. It's going to be just you and me from now on. Just you and me, darling. In a moment, act two of No Coward's Blithe Spirit on Best Plays. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. We return to the Best Plays production of Blithe Spirit by No Coward... Starring John Loder, Mildred Natwick, Hala Stoddard, and Anne Burr. And here again is John Chapman. In the Condamine household in Kent, domestic relations are strained. At a seance conducted on the premises, a medium inadvertently materialized the ghost of Charles Condamine's first wife, Elvira. Charles' second wife, Ruth, has finally summoned the medium, one Madame Arcati, to see what can be done about sending Elvira back to the spirit world. Now, Mrs. Condamine, you say she first materialized during the seance when I went into my trunk. Not to me, to my husband. First I thought he was joking, but now I know she's here. And he sees her. Capital, capital. <laughs> but that's splendid. From your own professional point of view, perhaps. <laughs> triumph, my dear. Nothing more, no less than a triumph. For you, perhaps. For me, it's embarrassing to say the least. At last, at last, the genuine materialization. Forgive me, Mrs. Condamine. I'm being abominably selfish. How can I help you? How? Well, by sending her back immediately to where she came from, of course. Oh, I'm afraid that's easier said than done. You mean to tell me that she's liable to stay here indefinitely? Well, it's difficult to say. I fear it depends largely upon her. But my dear Madame Arcata... Where is she now? My husband has driven her into Folkestone. Apparently she was anxious to see an old friend of hers who's staying there. One of us or a friend from the other side? My husband didn't say. I don't hear her or see her. But there is ample evidence that she really is present, that he doesn't just imagine her. More than ample, Madame Arcata. <laughs> She's constantly spoiling my flower arrangements, moving the furniture about, and she's forever playing the gramophone, the same record, over and over and over, always. Ah, oh, the Irving Berlin tune. We played it at the seance, I remember. What a 
coincidence. It should have been her favorite as well as Daphne's. Daphne? My control. Oh, yes. Well, now, perhaps she'd have an idea for getting Elvira back to wherever it is. Oh, dear, no. She's only a little girl and not very bright into the bargain. Uh, when did the first Mrs. Condamine pass over? Seven years ago. Ah, that means she must have been on the waiting list. Waiting list? Yes. She must have marked herself down for a return visit. But she'd never been able to manage it unless there was a strong influence at work. I am not particularly interested in the question of how she got here. I'm solely concerned with the question of how to get her away again as soon as possible. At the moment, I fear I cannot offer any great hopes, Mrs. Condine. Do you mean to sit there and tell me that having mischievously conjured up this ghost or spirit or whatever she is and placed me in a hideous position, you're unable to do anything about it at all? Kindly remember that I came here on your own invitation. On my husband's invitation. I did what I was requested to do, which was to give a seance and establish contact with the other side. I... I had no idea there was any ulterior motive mixed up in it. Ulterior motive? Well, your husband was obviously eager to get in touch with his former wife. He had no intention of trying to get in touch with anyone. What? The whole thing was to get material for a mystery story he's writing about a homicidal medium. Am, am I to understand that I was invited here in a spirit of mockery? Not at all. He merely wanted to make notes on some of the tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade? <laughs> I've never been so insulted in my life. But, Madam, our I we have nothing more to say to one another. Goodbye. Oh, please don't go. Please. If you I... and your husband were foolish enough to tamper with the unseen for paltry motives, whatever has happened to you is your own fault. And as far as I'm concerned, by the phrase, you can stew in your own juice. Oh, Madam, our come back. Madam. Ruth. Ruth. Yes, Charles. Madame in the hallway. What was she doing here? I asked her to come. Well, you didn't tell me you were going to. You didn't tell me you were going to ask Elvira to live with us. I didn't. Uh, Ruth, what was the old girl so cross about? I told her the truth about why we invited her here the other night, and she stormed out. Oh, now, that was unnecessary and most unkind. She needed taking down a bit. Why did you ask her here? Oh, that's obvious, Charles. <laughs> to get me exercise, of course. Is that true, Ruth? Is what true? What Elvira just said. You know perfectly well, I can't hear what Elvira says. She said you got Madame Arcadi here to try and get her exorcised. Is that true? We discussed the possibility. There's a snake in the grass for you. You had no right to do such a thing without consulting me. I have every right. The situation is absolutely impossible, and you know it. Oh, now, if you would only make an effort and try and be a little more friendly to Elvira, we might all have quite a jolly time. I have no wish to have a jolly time with Elvira. She's certainly very bad-tempered, isn't she, Charles? I can't think why you married her. She's naturally a little upset, Elvira. We must make allowances. I was never bad-tempered, though, was I, darling? Even when you were beastly to me? I was never beastly to you. Charles! Uh, Yes, Ruth? Where is Elvira now? In the chair by the table. Now, look here, Elvira. I shall have to call you Elvira, shan't I? I can't very well call you Mrs. Condamine. It would sound too silly. I don't see why. Did she say anything, Charles? She said she would like nothing better than to be called Mrs. Condamine. (laughs) You really are sweet, Charles, darling. I worship you. (laughs) I wish to be absolutely honest with you, Elvira. Hold on to your hat, boy. But before we go any further, I want to ask you a frank question. Why did you come here? I came because the power of Charles' love tugged and tugged at me. Didn't it, my sweet? (laughs) What did she say then? Uh, uh, She said she came because she wanted to see me again. Well, she's done that now, hasn't she? Now, we can't be inhospitable, Ruth. What? I I didn't mean to be. But I should like to have just an idea of how long you intend to stay, Elvira. Well, I don't know. I really don't know. (laughs) Isn't it awful? She says she doesn't know. Well, didn't that bogus old medium have any constructive ideas about getting rid of me? Now, what did Madame Arcadi say, Ruth? She said she couldn't do a thing. Hooray! Now, 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 don't be so upset, Ruth, dear. We shall soon adjust ourselves. Oh, Charles, how can you? You must be out of your mind. Yeah, I thought I was at first. Now I must say I'm, uh, I'm beginning to enjoy myself. Oh, Charles. Uh, Charles. Off again. Oh, you really must be... You <laughs> mustn't be so callous, Elvira. Try and see her point a little. What did she say, Charles? I suppose it was something insulting. No, dear, it was nothing of the sort. Now, look here, Elvira. Uh, not there, Ruth. She's over by the window now. Why the blazes can't she stay in the same place? Thank you again. Oh, my poor Charles, what a 
terrible light for Miss Lee. Oh, do shut up, darling. You'll only make everything worse. Was that darling addressed to her or to me? Both of you. This is intolerable. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't get into another tizzy. I am past all that. I'm going up to my room now, and I shall have my dinner on a tray. You and she can have the house to yourselves and joke and gossip with each other to your heart's content. Oh, Ruth, please don't be like that. the first thing in the morning, I am going up to London to interview the Society for Psychical Research on ways and means of getting rid of her. And if they fail me, I shall go straight to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Now then, Mr. Condamine, let's let's have a look at that arm of yours. Oh, I'm sure it's only a slight sprain, Dr. Bradman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, how did it happen? Well, the light was out on the stair landing, and I, well, I just stumbled and fell. Well, you're right. It is only a sprain. But I think I'll put it in a sling. Oh, but I can't. I've got to drive it. I mean, I, I, I have to drive into Folkestone tonight. Well, all right. If you promise to go very slowly and carefully, your, your gear shift is on the right, isn't it? Yes. Well, use that left hand as little as possible. How is he, Doctor? It's not serious, I oh, hope. Oh, no, just a sprain. It's curious your husband and your housemate falling downstairs on the same evening, isn't it? Very curious. Well, uh, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Condamine. And careful driving, Condamine. The roads are slippery today. Charles. Yes? Is uh, Elvira in here now? Uh, no, she went out for a walk. I must talk to you about it, Charles. It's important. I implore you to listen carefully to what I have to say. Oh, you're not going to start making scenes again, are you? No, but I warn you, Charles, my patience is being stretched to the utmost. Well, as far as I can see, the position is as difficult for Elvira as for you. Now, the, the poor little thing comes trustingly back from the dead, and what's she faced with? Nothing but brawling and hostility. What did she expect? Oh, well, now, surely even a ghost has the right to expect a little of the milk of human kindness. Milk of human fiddlesticks. Now, that just doesn't make sense, dear. Elvira is about as trusting as a puff adder, and a good deal more dangerous into the bargain. Dangerous? I never heard anything so ridiculous. This is a fight, Charles, a bloody battle, a duel to the death between Elvira and me. Do you realize that? No, I don't. Charles, listen to me. She came here for one purpose and for one purpose alone. It's to get you to herself forever. Oh, that's absurd. How could she? By killing you off, of course. Killing me... You're mad. Why do you suppose Edith fell on the stairs last night the same way you did? Well, what's Edith got to do with it? Because the whole of the top stair was covered with axle grease. Cook found it afterwards. You're making this up. I'm not. I swear I'm not. Why do you suppose when you were cutting that dead branch out of the pear tree, the ladder broke? Because it had been practically sawn through on both sides. But why should she want to kill me? I, I can understand I wanted to kill you, but why me? If you were dead, it would be her final triumph over me. She'd have you with her forever on her damned astral plane, and I'd be left high and dry. She's probably planning some sort of spiritual remarriage. I wouldn't put anything past her. Ruth. You do see now, don't you? Well, she couldn't be so sly, so wicked. She couldn't. Couldn't she just... I grant you, as a character, she was always rather light and irresponsible, but oh, I, I'd never have believed her capable of low cunning. Perhaps the spirit world has deteriorated her. Oh, Ruth. For heaven's sake, Charles, this is serious. Oh, what are we to do? I'm going to take the car now and drive over to Madame Arcati's. I don't care how cross she is, she's got to help us. And whatever you do, don't let Elvira know that we suspect a thing. <laughs> Ready? Uh, what for? To drive into Foxton, of course. Oh, there's no hurry, is there? The, the movie doesn't start for another hour. I don't believe you want to take me at all. Oh, but of course I want to take you, Elvira, but I, I still think it would be more sensible to go tomorrow. It's a filthy night, and we might have an accident on the road. <laughs> Does that strike you as funny? <laughs> no, dear. Only familiar. All through our married life, I only had to suggest something for you to start hedging. I'm not hedging. I merely oh, said right, that... all right. We'll spend another cozy, intimate evening at home. With Ruth sewing away at that hideous centerpiece and snapping at us like a terrier. Ruth is perfectly aware that the centerpiece is hideous. It happens to be a birthday present for her mother. Now, it's no use defending Ruth's taste to me. Look at this room. She's ruined. Look at those curtains and that awful shawl on the piano. And this hideous bar. 
<laughs> if you don't behave yourself, I shan't take you to Folkestone ever. Oh, please, Charles, please. Let's go now. Why can't we? Oh, for one thing, the car won't be back for half an hour at least. What do you mean? Well, Ruth's taken it. She had to drive to the village. What? Well, what on earth's the matter? Ruth? Ruth has taken the car? Oh, she won't be long. Oh, stop her. Go out and stop her immediately. It's too late now. She's been gone ten minutes at least. Oh, no. What are you going on like this for? What have you done? Done? Well, I haven't done anything. What are you in such a state for? Well, I'm not. I don't know what you mean. You've done something dreadful. Don't look at me like that, Charles. I haven't done anything. I swear I haven't. The car. You tampered with the car. No, Charles, no. Oh, Ruth was right. You did want to kill me. What did you do, Elvira? Nothing. Answer me. I didn't do anything, Charles. I swear I... Elvira. Hello? Yes, speaking. I see. The bridge at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. I, I'll come at once. Madame Arcati, sir. Oh, Madame Arcati, what a, what a very welcome surprise. To come, Mr. Condamine. Yes. I, I felt a tremendous urge, like a rushing wind, so I hopped on my bike, and here I am. It was very kind of you. Oh, no, no, no. It was my duty. Duty? I reproached myself bitterly, you oh, know. Oh, now, please don't. There's no necessity for that. I allowed myself to get into a huff with your late wife only a few days before she passed over in that regrettable motor accident. I, I pedaled all the way home in the grip of temper, Mr. Condamine. I've regretted it ever since. Oh, now, my dear Madame Arcati... Please let me go on. I threw up the sponge... In a moment of crisis, I threw up the sponge instead of throwing down the gauntlet. Uh, it seems that circumstances have been a little too strong for all of us, Madame Arcati. Well, I've been thinking very carefully, Mr. Condamine. I've also been reading up a good deal during the last few dreadful days. I... I gather that we are alone. Well, my first wife is not in the room. The, the funeral exhausted her, you know. I imagine my second wife is with her on the, the other side... Well, of course, I, I can't say for certain. That, well, thank heaven I can't see her, too. Oh, of course not. Um, Mr. Condamine, uh, have you remarked no difference in the texture of your first wife since the accident? No, she seems much as usual. Perhaps a, a trifle low-spirited, but that's all. <laughs> that washes that out. What? In the 19th century, it, it was believed that a ghost who had participated in the death of a human being disintegrated automatically. How do you know that Elvira was in any way responsible for Ruth's death? It came to me last night, Mr. Condamine. It came to me in a blinding flash. I had just finished my Ovaltine and turned out the light when I suddenly started up in bed with a loud cry. Great Scott, I said, I've got it. And here it is, the formula. I recalled it from Edmondson's witchcraft and its oh, byway. Oh, no, 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 look here, madam. Well, you're Carty. still anxious to dematerialize your first wife, I suppose. Shh. Of course I am. I'm perfectly furious with her, but... But what? Well, she's been very upset for the last few days. You see, apart from me being angry with her, which she always hated even when she was alive, Ruth, my second wife, has hardly left her side for a moment. You see that she's, well, she's having a, a pretty bad time. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Condamine. With this formula, I think I will be able to get rid of her without hurting her feelings in the least. I may oh, even... Hold on, Madame Arcati, hold on. Elvira's just come into the room. Oh, I thought you were alone. What's she doing here? Uh, why, uh, Madame Arcati came to offer her condolences on poor Ruth's death. They should have been congratulations. Oh, now, please, don't say things like that, Elvira. It's in the worst possible taste. Uh, Madame Arcati, allow me to introduce my first wife, Elvira. How do you do? What does she want, Charles? Send her away. In what part of the room is she at the moment, Miss Condamine? Oh, she's moving about rather rapidly. I'll, I'll tell you when, when and where she settles. Interesting. Very interesting. I smell ectoplasm strongly. What a disgusting thing to say. Where is she now? Here, close to me. Are you happy, my dear? Tell that silly old fake to mind her own business. Was the journey from the other side difficult? Are you weary? She's darkly. Oh, I almost have contact. I can sense the vibrations. Oh, this is magnificent. Charles, do get rid of her for a moment, will you? I simply must talk to you alone. It's important. Make contact. I, I feel she wants me to leave the room. Oh, 
She's not bad, is she? Am I correct, Mr. Condamine? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Just for a few minutes. Uh, Elvira wants to talk to me alone. Oh, very well. But don't let her get away. Fat chance. What's that? Charles, do you really think she could get me back again? You mean you, you want to go? Yes. The whole thing's been a failure. A miserable, dreary failure. And oh, what high hopes I started out with. Well, you can't expect much sympathy from me, Elvira. I'm perfectly aware that your highest hope was to murder me. Oh, don't put it like that. It sounds so beastly. Well, it is beastly. Well, there was a time when you'd have welcomed the chance of being with me forever and ever. I had no idea you could be so unscrupulous. <laughs> oh, John. Oh, no, no, no. Stop crying. They're only ghost tears. They don't mean anything, really, but they're very painful. Well, you brought all this on yourself, you know. You needn't have died at all if you hadn't been idiotic enough to go out on the river with Guy Henderson and get soaked to the skin and catch pneumonia. What has Guy Henderson got to do with it? You behaved abominably with Guy Henderson, and you know it. Guy adored me. Anyhow, he was very attractive. You told me distinctly he didn't attract you in the least. Well, he'd have gone through the roof if I'd told you that he did. Hmm, I suppose you let him kiss you, didn't you? Well, how could I stop him? He was bigger than I was. And you swore to me... Of course I did. You were always making scenes about nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. And you seem to forget that you had spent the entire evening making sheep's eyes at that overblown harridan with the false pearl. A woman in Cynthia Cheviot's position would hardly wear false pearls. They were practically all she was wearing. I am pained to observe that seven years in the echoing vaults of eternity have in no way impaired your native vulgarity. <laughs> well, I don't see what there is to laugh about. Oh, Charles, you never suspected it. But I laughed at you steadily from the altar to the grave. <laughs> All your ridiculous petty jealousies and your fussings. And... You were reckless and irresponsible and morally unstable. Oh, I realized that before we left Budley Salterton. Nobody but a monumental bore would have thought of having a honeymoon at Budley Salterton. Well, what's the matter with Budley Salterton? Oh, I was an eager young bride, Charles. I wanted glamour, music, romance. All I got was potted palms and seven hours a day on a damp golf course. Oh, it's a pity you didn't tell me so at the time. Well, I did, but you wouldn't listen. That's why I went out on the moors that day with Captain Bracegirdle. I was desperate. What, you swore to me that you'd gone over to see your aunt in Exmouth? It was the moor. Oh, what a fool I was. What a blind fool. Did he make love to you? Of course. Oh, Elvira. Only very discreetly. He was in the cavalry, you know. Well, well, all I can say is I'm well rid of you. But you're not rid of me. Oh, yes, I am. You're dead and Ruth did. I shall sell this house lock, stuck and barrel and go away. I shall have to follow you. That's one of the rules, you know. You called me back. So you're stuck with me. I did not call you back. Well, somebody did, and it's hardly likely to have been Ruth. Well, nothing could have been further from my thoughts. Why, you were talking about me before dinner that evening. Oh, I might just as well have been talking about, about Joan of Arc, but that wouldn't necessarily mean I wanted her to come and live with me. She's rather fun, as a matter of fact. Oh, stick to the point. <laughs> when I think of what might have happened if I'd succeeded in killing you, it makes me shudder. Nothing but bickering and squabbling forever and ever and ever. I swear I'll be better off with Ruth. At least she'll find her own set of friends and not get in my way. I'm sick and tired of all these insults. Please go away. There's nothing I should like better. Very well, then it's settled. Uh, Madame Arcade, will you come in here, please? Is, is darling Elvira still here? Yes, and we are both agreed that she must go as soon as possible. Oh, well, I can't guarantee anything, of course, but I'll do my best. What's the formula? Well, I have the basic ingredients here in my bag, along with my... Trumpet and crystal ball, here we are, salt and pepper. We ought, of course, to have some shepherd's wart and a frog or two, but I think I can manage without. This is going to be a plop. I can tell you that here and now. Now, a few snapdragons out of that vase, there's a good chap. Mm -hmm. Here you are. Now then, the gramophone. In the old days, of course, they used a zipper or reed pipes. We'd, we'd better have the same record we had before, I think. I'll get it. Where is she now, Mr. Condamine? She's gone to put the record on the machine. Oh, don't start it yet, dear. Now then, sit down, please, Mr. Condamine, and rest your hands on the table. But don't put your fingers in the pepper. And if your wife will be good enough to lie down on the sofa... Well, go on, Elvira. No, all right. But it's a waste of time. She's a complete thing. Now the music and away we go. Hold on to yourself. Concentrate. <laughs> 
Ghostly spectre, ghoul or fiend, nevermore be thou convened. Shepherd's wart and holy rite, banish thee into the night. What a disagreeable little bird. <laughs> well, so much for that. She's gone into one of her idiotic trances, and I'm as much here as ever I was. Charles! Ruth! Do my eyes deceive me? Oh, no, not that! Charles, what is the meaning of this? I wish I knew, Ruth. I wish I knew. You sent for me, didn't you? On the contrary, I was trying to send Elvira away, or rather, Madame Arcati was. Well, wake her up at once. It may be all right for Elvira to go gallivanting about in plain view after she's dead, but I think it's in very poor taste, and I don't intend to be tricked into staying here with you and her any longer than I can help it. No use, Charles. We've stood up, we've lain down, we've concentrated. We have subjected ourselves to the most humiliating hocus-pocus for hours and hours. We've endured five seances, watched that tiresome old woman fling herself in and out of trances till we're dizzy and still no result. Well, it's not my fault. If she can't get us back, we'll have to think of something else. Uh, Elvira, you've been dead the longest. Don't you know anybody on the other side who would help us out? It's no good, Charles. If we got Cagliostro, Mesmer, Merlin, and Black Douglas all in a row, they couldn't do a thing. The impetus has got to come from here. Perhaps darling Charles doesn't want us to go quite enough. Oh, I certainly do. Well, you must have a very weak will, then. I've always suspected it. Well, there's no use arguing anymore. Wake up, Madame Arcati. Oh, not another seance, please. Not another seance. Madame Arcati, wake up. Please, wake up. Shake her. Shh, it might upset her. I don't care if it kills her. Please, wake up, Madame Arcadi. Mm. Ah, she's coming around. <laughs> oh, what time is it? Mm, uh, uh, ten past five. Are they still here? Yes. How disappointing. Yes. Mr. Condamine, I think we may be barking up the wrong tree. That's obvious. I mean, we've been going on the assumption that you summoned your wives from the other side. Oh, I've insisted time and time again that I did nothing of the sort. That's gallantry for you. Well, if Charles didn't call it back, who did? I'll look in my crystal ball. Oh, crap, the thing, it's cloudy again. Oh, nothing there but yard and yard of gauze bandage. Bandage? Does that mean anything to you, Mr. Condamine? Nothing. Dr. Bradman put a bandage on Edith's head after she fell down the stairs. Fell or was pushed? Oh, don't be so suspicious, Charles. She fell quite of her own accord. She was coming down the stairs, took one look at me, screamed and fell headlong. She saw you? Are you sure? Who saw whom? What's she saying, Mr. Condamine? Elvira says Edith saw her. Your maid, Mr. Condamine? Yes, shall I ring for her? No, she might get the wind up. I'll summon her. Uh, the bell pulls right over there, Madame Arcati. Won't be necessary. Be you in nook or cranny, answer me. Be you in still room or closet, answer me. Be you behind the panel above the stair beneath the eaves, waking or sleeping? Answer me. That ought to do it, or I'm a Dutchman. Do what? Hush, wait. Uh, would you like the lights out, or, or music, or no, anything? No, no. It's near. It's very near. Did you blame it, sir? No, Edith, I didn't. The bandage, the same bandage I saw in my crystal. Come on, Charlie. Look at it. Well, I heard the bell, or somebody calling. I was asleep at that rotten and know which it was. Come here, child. Well, must I say? Yeah. Go on, go to Madame Arcadi. It's quite all right. Whom do you see in this room, child? Oh, dear. Answer, please. Yeah. You, madam. Go on. The master. Anyone else? Oh, now, madam. Look again. Well, I don't understand. Come, oh, child. Don't beat about the bush. Do concentrate, Elvira. Stop wriggling about. Oh, shut up. You <gasps> turned then. Did you hear something? Oh, now, Maggie. She's lying. They always do. They? Where are they now, Edith? Father Carplay. <gasps> she can see them. Probably not very clearly, but enough. Now, let me go. I've done nothing. Let me go back to bed. Sit down, child. Oh, please, sir. I do as Madame Arcati says, Edith. Look at me, Edith. Yes, madam. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, dear. What's the matter with her? She bore me. Here, Edith. Look at my finger. Look, now it's on the right, and now it's on the left. Backwards and forwards. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. Well, so far so good. She's off, all right. Off? Uh, in a trance, you mean? Yes. She's a natural. 
Now then, would you ask your wives to stand close together, Mr. Condemine? Where? Right next to you. How is that being ordered about like this? It would save him right if we flatly refused to do anything at all. Are you sorry for having been so mischievous, Edith? Oh, yes, madam. You know what you have to do now, don't you, Edith? Oh, yes, madam. I'll be loving you always with a love that's That's true. enough, dear. Continue when I give you the signal. I believe it's going to work, whatever it is. Oh, Charles. Shh, be quiet, Ruth. But this is goodbye, Charles. Charles, tell me to stop. There's something I want to say before I go. You should have thought of that before, Elvira. It's too late now. Oh, all the mean, ungracious... Charles, mess. listen a moment. Right. Continue, Charles. I'll be loving you Listen, Charles. I saw Captain Bracegirdle again several times when you were in Nottingham, and I must say I couldn't have enjoyed it more. Don't think you're getting rid of us quite so easily, Charles. You may not be able to see or hear us, but we shall be here all right. I consider that you've behaved atrociously over the whole miserable business, and I should like to say here and now... We've done it, we've done it. That's quite enough singing for the moment, Edith. Shall I put on the lights? I'll get them. They've gone, they've really gone. Yes, I think we've really pulled it off this time. Now, oughtn't we to wake Edith out of our trance before she brings them back again? No danger, let her sleep it off. Golly, what a night. I am ready to drop in my tracks. Uh, Would you like to stay here? uh, There's a spare room. Uh, No, thank you. Each to his own nest. I'll pedal home in a jiffy. It's only seven miles. I'm deeply grateful to you, Madame Marcotti. Oh, good heavens, Mr. Condamine. It was a pleasure. When you come back, don't fail to ring me up. When I come back? Take my advice, Mr. Condamine, and go away immediately. But, Madame Marcotti, this you don't mean... must make... be an unhappy house for you. There must be memories, both grave and gay, in every corner of it also. Also What? There are more things in heaven and earth, Mr. Condamine. Just go. Pack your traps and go as soon as possible. Do you mean they may still be here? Quien sabe, as the Spanish say. Hmm, I wonder. Uh, I'll follow your advice, Madame Arcadi, and uh, thank you again. Good night. No, don't trouble to see me out. I know the way. Cheerio once more, and good hunting. Ruth, Elvira, are you here? I know darn well you are. I just want to tell you I'm going away. I don't think you'll be able to follow me. In spite of what Elvira said, I don't think spirits can travel over water. Just one final word to you, Elvira. You were very silly to think I didn't know about you and Captain Bracegirdle. But what you didn't know, that I was extremely attached to Paula Westlake at the time. Ah, I thought you were listening. And a word to you, Ruth, and then I'm finished. I was reasonably faithful to you, Ruth, my dear, but I doubt if it would have lasted much longer. You were becoming increasingly domineering, you know. So goodbye to both of you. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> have just heard the best plays production of Blythe Spirit by Noel Coward, starring John Loder, Mildred Natwick, Hala Stoddard, and Ann Burr. And here is your host, drama critic John Chapman. Well, most husbands get haunted by their wives one way or another, I suppose. Somebody ought to write a play about wives being haunted by husbands. Blythe Spirit was good fun. And thanks to Miss Natwick, Miss Stoddard, Mr. Loder, Miss Burr, and their fellow players for making it fun. Next Sunday, we will have two best plays instead of one. They will be two one-actors by the leading American playwright of our time, Eugene O'Neill. One is Bound East for Cardiff, and the other is The Long Voyage Home. Both dramas of the sea, you will remember. Our company will include William Marshall, Raymond Edward Johnson, and Joan Waring. This is Chapman saying good night until next Sunday. 
Best Plays is directed by Ed King. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.